first of all, a, a lot of people don't know what the oath of office is. Could you just real quickly tell everyone what the oath of office is for our senators and congressmen and president? You mean to take the oath of office? No, what, what it is, what the oath of office is. It's a commitment. Yes, yeah, so it's, it's to defend the Constitution against enemies domestic yeah. and foreign. Um, it is, I think, a commitment to follow what the, the founding fathers laid out in the Constitution to protect the country. It is a form of government that would, uh, I think, restrict us from becoming a monarchy. I mean, going back to the history of, of the country, uh, that we would have a government that was balanced and that we would protect the rights of the people first and foremost. Okay, and so, what, ha what happens if, if a politician doesn't, doesn't uh, well, say, violates his oath of office? What's the punishment? Uh, unfortunately, not a lot. I mean, a lot of people are violating the oath of office. But the Constitution is, I mean, there is a battle. The Supreme Court is there to sort of try and interpret what Congress is trying to do. I mean, people, there are people that talk about textualism, like uh, Justice Scalia or strict constructionists. Everybody interprets the, the Constitution in a different way. And so when you take the oath of office, I think you have to defend the country and take your principles and beliefs so that you uh, vote the conscience of your people, represent the people that uh, sent you to Congress or to the Senate, hopefully, in this place. Now, I, I had a moment to spend with uh, Thomas Paine, and he suggested <laughs> that there were probably 50 percent of Republicans and Democrats in Washington, D.C., that have even read the Constitution. What do you, how do you feel about that? What do you think the numbers are? I think it's much higher than that. I mean, I, a lot of people that I know have read the Constitution, but studied it, probably those are, those are accurate numbers. I think that the, um, but understanding the Constitution, I, I think you, you have to put it in the context of the principles and, and the Founding Fathers' writings outside of the Constitution. Why did we need the Bill of Rights? Well, because we were so, um, in the aftermath of the, the war, for independence, we ended up feeling like government can get too big and too powerful. So we, we said, let's keep it limited and small, make sure they're empowered, have checks and balances. But people would not have ratified the, the um, Constitution unless the Bill of Rights were included. And so I think that what individuals want is a, is a protection from the government. We want to be free from the oversight, from the intrusiveness. And it is, it is you know, they, they, they take away our rights in business, in uh, our culture, in our lands right now. And uh, my feeling right now is the Constitution has been a forgotten document. It's been forgotten. The Founding Fathers' intent has been forgotten. Why do we have the 17th Amendment? The Founding Fathers had a vision that senators would be accountable to state legislatures, that state legislatures would have power. But that's not the way the, it works today. Uh, states are, are, are diminishing in their power. The federal government is usurping that constitutional right and that's what uh, I think we've lost lost our way. Okay. Well, do you think politicians in Washington are intentionally trying to undermine the Constitution or change it because they believe it's outdated or isn't sufficient? And if I hope not. That, I certainly hope not. And and if they are doing that, then we need new elected leaders. We need a new generation of people that believe in the Constitution, that believe that the government is not the answer to all our problems, that that we have self-reliance, personal responsibilities, that we return to expecting more out of ourselves and less out of government. And I think that's what the Founding Fathers felt, that freedom in this country, uh, private property protections, the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness uh, dependent on Americans being free to pursue what they wanted to and not dependent on the government. And yet everything that's happening in Congress today is so much power, so much money, and they want to control every aspect of our lives, what we get, what we eat, where we go, how, what kind of health care. They're going to force us to buy health care. That's, that's a mandate. It? It's unconstitutional. Okay. And, and yet still people believe it's okay. And so we've got to get back to some principles, and I believe smaller government is going to help us win a lot of those arguments. If we can downsize the government and just leave them with their proper role in creating a justice system and um, having a military to defend us from foreign uh, occupation and, and, and threats, those are s simple roles that the, that the Constitution outlines, where the government has tried to be in everything and, and not only regulate commerce, but be in the business of automotive companies, of banks, of health care. I mean, what next? Airplane building? You know, are they going to come and mow our lawn as well? I mean, yeah, what what right. is the government not going to do? Yeah. Okay. Do you think the average citizen understands that all the politicians in Washington have committed to uphold the Constitution and defend it? Or do you think it's in their minds that whatever they decide as majority is it and that we have no power? 
You know, what's exciting about the time right now is people are getting off the couch. They're getting involved. I think Americans have historically been too apathetic. They have not paid attention. It's out of sight, out of mind. The attention span uh, in general has been very limited, and it's been sound bites and television. And right now we're seeing a resurgence of people really studying and trying to understand and back up their beliefs in the Constitution and the proper role of government in ways that I think we're going to take back the country. I think you're going to see Democrats and Republicans swept out of office and new leaders come in with a, a mandate to, to cut government spending, limit its role, and free up the private enterprise system so that we can succeed, so that our kids have a future, so that parents will feel that their kids can have it better than they have it. Right now, I think it's 63, 70% uh, of parents feel like their kids are not going to have it as good as they had it. And that's not America. That's not what America has stood for. It's the first time in history that, that uh, parents feel that way. Great. Do you think it's important that people maybe uh, get a copy of the Constitution, get it out? We Absolutely. I think you got it. It's always good to have one. Got? Right here, and it's what just like you scriptures. Can you... you can write in it. You can, you know, so you can. Let's oh, see. Great. There's some. Awesome. See some parts that I like the most, so, and I'm a commerce. I'm a business guy, so commerce is so a big you, issue for me. And when I look at it, I, I see the founding fathers looking at entrepreneurs and saying we have to have a country where opp opportunity is everywhere and entrepreneurs can thrive. And yet we're slowly constricting that ability in this country. So, okay. what would you say to people to get them excited about getting a copy and reading it this next week? Come and join our campaign. <laughs> But this is my wife, Laura, by the way, um, and uh, I would say that, you know, we have to stand on principles. We have to define principles. We have to step up and we have to make a difference. If, if one person will step up, there's an enormous amount of impact that that one person can have. And I hope that uh, people will get behind my campaign or maybe some of my uh, opponents in this race, but get up and do something, because if you do nothing, you can expect the worst. If you get up and do something, you can leave this earth knowing that you've made a difference. Okay. Do you think the average American can pick up a copy of the Constitution and understand some of it? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's an easy document. I'll tell you, I've challenged the uh, Governor Herbert to uh, spread this system statewide. In Garfield County, eighth graders and seniors in high school have a constitutional bowl. And it's just like my, my son plays football for Timview High School. They just won the state championship. Everybody's cheering, yelling, cheerleaders. They do that with the Constitution. I mean, how exciting is that? They can win the competition in their high school, and then they go into their district, and then they go into the county, and they can be champions of the Constitution. And they, they have cheerleaders. People are yelling. They're screaming and hollering. The whole school comes out. I mean, it's an exciting uh, way to learn and love the Constitution. I think it, I would encourage all counties and the whole state to do that. Oh, terrific. Well, that's great. Thank you very much for your time. Appreciate Thank you. It. Great and good luck. With your sure. Thank you. Nice to meet you.